Wait, you're not wearing a mic? Oh my gosh. Hi everyone and welcome to Social Live. We are back after a long Thanksgiving weekend and I've already forgot to put on my mic so let me uh, clip this sure. in. <laughs> welcome Jill, Thank back you. to the show. It's so good to have you here. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here. It's been a few weeks. Um, the last time I was here, I was about to get married. Yes. So I am married. That happened. Ooh. Yay. <laughs> and now you're about to leave for your honeymoon I on know. Saturday. It's insane. Where are you off to? Where can we hop into your luggage and follow you uh, to? <laughs> going to South Africa. So a uh, few days for a safari, which is very so nice. exciting, a little scary. How'd you pick South Africa? So we were all set actually to go to Hawaii. Um, we were going to do a little bit of a road trip on the east, on the west coast of California, start in wine country, and then go to Hawaii from there. And then all of those wildfires happened yes. in wine country, yes, yes. and I'm watching, and I'm like, I don't know if this is the best time yeah. to go. And then I was talking to a few people, and they would said, you know, you're not really going to have this opportunity again two weeks off from work, and you may as well go somewhere super cool that you probably won't get back to. And then we got uh, South Africa. Did you start exploring social media and looking at all the beautiful photos? Oh, yeah, of course. Then I stalked Instagram, <laughs> anything that said South Africa. Um, and my husband's actually been to this one safari that we're going on. So it was pretty easy. He took care of everything. Amazing. He booked the whole trip. Wow. It was amazing. He married a planner. I'm jealous. Yeah, he booked the whole thing. Um, so much so that I'm almost like, I don't know anything about the trip. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I I, somebody said to me, one of my friends said, oh, so do you have safari clothes? I didn't know that was even a thing. I didn't know that's a thing yeah, either. it is. So apparently. what did you buy? So you need, um, you can't wear black. Apparently that attracts some certain type of mosquitoes. All right, so we couldn't wear so this outfit. We'd yes, be out. we're yeah, out. So black, <laughs> navy, so there's jeans, that, that goes. And white is apparently not good either. I mean, that's my whole wardrobe. So you're supposed to wear camo? <laughs> so basically, like, you need camo. You just need these neutral colors that kind of blend in. And that way you don't scare the animals. You don't attract bugs. So there Well, you where go. can we follow your, your uh, journey? <laughs> so I guess I'll be, I think we'll be posting on Instagram. Okay. As long as we have Wi-Fi. Um, Good point. Which I think that we do. So we'll, we'll be posting some of our best pictures on Instagram. We'll probably use our same hashtag from our wedding, which was Jill Mikey ATW. Against the world, don't even ask. I remember, <laughs> I remember the whole story. All right, so for those of you who want to follow Jill's safari adventures on her honeymoon, you can follow her hashtag, because how else would we know what's going on if it wasn't for Instagram and our special exactly. hashtag? Exactly, that's where I learn everything. Amazing. Well, we're so glad to have you back here. We Thank definitely you. missed having you on. And for those of you watching, Jill is also the co-founder of The Need to Know. It's where we get all of our breaking news every single morning, and is also an anchor on Cheddar TV. Where can everyone watch you? Uh, so you, Cheddar.com yep. um, streams live. Uh, we also have a lot of clips on Twitter and Facebook. So it's, it's really ingrained in social media, uh, which is right up your guys' alley. Yes, so absolutely. They're realizing, I mean, this is the way of the future. So this is how people are getting their news. Like Need to Know as well. It's an email. It, fewer people are turning into traditional media to get all the information that they need. So... Online, on social media, that's where you'll find Jill us. is all over. You can find her everywhere. And we would also love for you to share this episode today for your chance to win a Tervis AR Holiday Cup. We'll be telling you more about what this amazing cup is at the end of the show. But start sharing, and this could be yours. One of your friends will be lucky if you gift this to them for the holidays. Stephanie, any advice? Last time you gave me some great marriage advice and wedding advice. Oh, yes. Honeymoon here's, advice. here's the honeymoon advice. So... We know it's very hard to disconnect when you're away. You want to keep checking Instagram and Twitter every 30 seconds <laughs> and your email. So what I did, and this is what actually my team forced me to do, so I wasn't compulsively checking email, I would turn off my email notifications during the day. So I couldn't, I like literally could not check my email until okay. I got back to the room at night. Where did you go? I was in Aruba. I went to Aruba. Okay, so that's a little bit harder though to disconnect because yeah. I feel like you probably had really good internet. Internet was perfect. Yeah. The Marriott property there had <laughs> incredible <laughs> incredible Wi-Fi speed right. and it was complimentary with the room so that's great advice. yes so it's okay. very it's hard to disconnect I mean we're all attached to our phones and maybe you can say I'm just gonna go on Instagram to upload one photo every day but I'm not gonna get sucked in so you can you live know, in the moment so. I would and I will love to take that back to the United States with me because I get so suckered into Instagram it's crazy yes. I mean I find myself just staying up 
It's nuts. It, I don't know what's so addictive about it, but I guess it's the pictures. I know. You just want to see what, <laughs> what's going on in all of the beautiful photos. And I discover everything through Instagram, new products, services. You know, the ads are incredible. I mean, that's what our business, that's what we yeah. do. So I just, I love Instagram, but it's definitely an addiction. So speaking Absolutely. of social media platforms, right before you got here, Snapchat announced a, a very big update. They announced that a new algorithm is going to reshape this platform and the redesign puts all the messages and stories from your friends to the left of the camera sorted by the people you talk to and view the most. So Kim is showing a video right now, but we knew Snapchat was going to have to do something big to continue to stay relevant. You know, I mean, Snapchat is interesting. We were waiting for what this redesign would be. And on their last earnings call, uh, when it was clear that just their user growth was not anything where it should be, and certainly not compared to Instagram and Facebook, they said, you know, we, we're hearing from customers that this is a hard system to use. Yes. It's, it's not intuitive. And even I, you know, I'm kind of like halfway between, I guess, millennial and a little bit older, and I feel like... I, I have to admit, I find Snapchat hard to use. When you first learned how to use it, did someone show you how to use the app? Yes. Somebody had to show me how to use it, but it's still, it's not like this user-friendly, obvious, you know, what, mm -hmm. how do you work it? So I think that that's an impediment, and a lot of people must have said that because Evan Spiegel, the CEO, he said, listen, we hear you. Yes. We get it, and we're going to be making this a lot use, more user-friendly. Um, and as well, they have this opportunity now that Facebook's come under fire and even Instagram and yes. Twitter for just these fake ads and, yeah. and Russian involvement to say, hey, we're not on that train. And yeah. I think that we're, this is all part of that. It's part of their, their rebrand to, yes. to keep them relevant. I still think they should have sold to Snapchat or to Facebook years ago. Imagine where they'd all... Uh, it's <laughs> really Snapchat interesting. is basically the testing ground for Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. They take what they're doing, they bring it over, and then they make Instagram even better. <laughs> and I feel bad because I love Instagram stories, which is a total copy of Snapchat. Yes, but it's the best. It's the best. Yeah. And I've been speaking at a lot of colleges over the past month, and I always ask the students, you know, what platforms are you using? Where are you spending the most time? And almost all of them say they're really not spending as much time on Snapchat. Wow. They've all moved over, spending more time on Instagram. They love Instagram stories. Very few hands went up for, for college students in the classes that I went to, and they were all marketing classes that are still using Snapchat regularly. They're and, all on Instagram. And what about Facebook? Facebook, you know, it's interesting. So college students are on Facebook, and what I have heard is that they're mostly using Facebook to connect with their family and their friends, right. and they're in a lot of these groups on Facebook. So in their fraternities and their sororities, they create these Facebook groups to all keep in touch, and it is the best platform for groups. So right. you can still reach college-age students on Facebook. Right, it just depends, it, not in the traditional way. And it's really interesting. Yep. So they're on it, they're just using it differently than they're using an Instagram or even a Snapchat. Exactly. I wonder what the teens are going to wind up using. The teens are definitely still on Snapchat. Okay. I can tell you that they're on Snapchat. They're using Snapchat even more than text message because text messages are permanent. So their parents can yeah. see what they're sending their friends. So they just communicate through, through Snapchat. And WhatsApp and all, yeah. and all the other ones. Yes. All right. Um, Interestingly enough, back to travel, Airbnb, uh, they just launched this new tool that lets a group of travelers split the bill ahead of time. Instead of how it is now, even if you use Venmo, somebody would have to pay and then everyone Request, pays that person yeah. back. And they found, again, listening to customers, what, what people actually want, they found that this was the top request because people were saying 43%, in fact, had said that travelers lost $1,000 or more because expenses for groups weren't repaid. I believe it. And I know that Jules' friends um, were not repaid by Jules. She told me this this morning. Not nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is definitely... Guys, pay her back. Yes. I told Jules, you better get it. She told me this this morning. I said, you better get on Venmo and repay your friends. She's, uh, Jules is in the back uh, turning red in the other way, but if you tell me that, Jules, you know you're gonna, you know you're gonna get called out on social live. But, you know, this is a really great update. I just was on, a, <laughs> she's in trouble. I just went away um, to Arizona for my friend Katie's bachelorette party, and she had put everything down on her card and had to send Venmo requests to everyone. And of course, you know, we were responsible, Jules, and paid her right back, but I can definitely see how how hard this would be to be sure you get paid back all the money. So I think this is a great update. Definitely, and it was, again, their number one request. So I love that through social media, actually, it was the president, the CEO of Airbnb, uh, December last year, 
oh, Christmas actually, posted to customers, hey, if you would want one change or if there's one thing that Airbnb can do to make things better, what would it be? And this was the number one request. And look, now, it took a year, yep. but they did it. And I think that it, social media, whether it be through Twitter, Twitter especially, mm -hmm. but Facebook, uh, all these mediums that are letting CEOs of companies have really direct contact yes. with their customers. And I think that we're seeing big improvements that are actually helpful to customers. Absolutely. So good on uh, Airbnb. And hopefully uh, friends won't be owed money. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble with her after this, after this episode. Well, um, Cyber Monday hit record-breaking uh, high sales, $6.59 billion Insane. in the U.S. I spent a lot of time on social media and looking for deals over the <laughs> holiday. I can share that with you. And a lot of those deals were on Facebook and on Instagram. I was just waiting for the 50 and 60% offers yeah. to come through on Banana Republic, on Gap, and Taylor. Those I'm are my go-tos for sales. Well, no, and it's true. It's, it's funny because I saw some 30%, and I, I actually was like, rolled my eyes. And it's 30%, <laughs> you're going to have to do a little bit better than that. I mean, to me, on a Black Friday or Cyber Monday, if you're not at 50%, I don't think I'm going to go for it. I, I agree with you. <laughs> I am the queen of looking for the best deal, so I like to double dip my deal. So I go to Ebates first, okay. and then I'll click through to the store because when I go to Ebates, I then get cash back. And I'm getting the discount from whatever the store is offering. I don't even know what Ebates is. Well, you just wait, Jill, because you're going to be getting a referral code, and I think you get a free ten dollar free ten dollar credit wait, when you. I'm so I love this. This is. Wait, so I'll, this I'll is, share my link with all of our with all of our friends that are watching. If you haven't done holiday shopping yet, you are going to be obsessed with Ebates. I've received almost a thousand dollars cash back over the past three years. Wow! Yes, just for regular shopping, you just click through. Okay, get me. Yes, get I'm me get involved. You in. They have a plug-in. There's mouths. Uh, for those of you at home, uh, there's mouths that are literally dropping in the in the back here. <laughs> this is true. And you know, it's interesting though in terms of social media, how these companies uh, used Instagram and Facebook. More than one in three businesses posted to Instagram stories. Absolutely. Which is very not just the posts that come down in your feed. I think that that's a pretty interesting. Approach. With Instagram stories, if you have over 10,000 followers, you can ha ask your audience to swipe up to go directly to that deal. Wow. So we were running all sorts of deals for so many of our e-commerce clients, and the sales were astronomical over the weekend. It was, it was incredible. Facebook is reporting that there were 450 million views of Black Friday and other related videos documenting everything from shopping guides to gift guides. So... Facebook and Instagram absolutely killed it this weekend. That's interesting. You would have advised clients Instagram stories was the way to go versus like a typical Facebook well, ad. Well, Instagram stories is part of what they need to be doing. Right. So it's Instagram stories, it's posting on their Instagram feed, it's running ads on Facebook, running ads on Pinterest. So right. it's part of a whole whole e-commerce strategy for sales. Wow. It's, and it's changed. I mean, you have to really keep up with this because it feels like every month these uh, social media giants are coming out with these new features. Absolutely, and that's why we, that's why we have a Facebook Live show yes. because otherwise how would everyone stay up to date with exactly. all of these changes? <laughs> I mean, news breaks literally every hour about these platforms. Now that you got Twitter, forget it, it's every minute. All right, so let's chat about my favorite update from the past few days, the royal engagement. I'm with you. I am so excited. You guys know I love everything royal, uh, but Prince Harry, if you guys have been living under a rock, is engaged <laughs> to Meghan Markle. What do you think about this? I love it. Yes. Okay, and so I wasn't, I wasn't that familiar with her before the engagement. Um, I really wasn't following this that much. And then once word of the engagement came out, I started reading a lot mm -hmm. about her. And I am so impressed just with her life and the things that she's done. Not only is she an actress, but she's this woman. said she was responding to a commercial. Women are battling greasy pans and mm -hmm. pots and pans. So it was like a dishwasher commercial. And she was so upset. And her parents said, you know what? You should write Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. You should write to all of these powerful women. She also wrote to the company. And it turned out they actually changed the ad and said people all over the world wow. are battling dirty dishes. So it, it was just such an incredible thing to me 
to learn about her, and it seems like she's just this really smart woman. Yeah. And I like that she's older than him. I know. I was like, this whole I time I had yeah. a chance, and now he's too young for me. <laughs> well, I know hearts broke across the world over the past few days, but I am so happy for that. And I follow the royal family on Instagram. I always love to see what they're up to. And when they had their engagement shoot, she wore that white coat the other yep. day, and I'm sure that it sold out right it away. Did sell yes, out, actually. Yes. What do you think of? Um, are you a fan of Kate Middleton as well? I'm a big fan of Kate Middleton, and I love. They both have their unique style. Yeah. You know, um, Megan is, I would say, like a little bit more trendy, and Kate is, I think, more reserved in in her attire and what she wears is more conservative. But I love both of their styles, and I just think they're both. Like sweet, down to earth. They yeah. seem super smart and articulate, and I love that they've both ended up with these powerful, incredible women. And did you know? I don't know if you saw this. I, I feel like we were just so gossiping about the royal family, but he um, designed her ring, Harry. Yes, and yes. he you, he said he got one diamond from Botswana, and yes. then the two other diamonds were from Princess I Diana. Know. I thought that was so I sweet. It was so nice. I mean, it's just really cool that he took such an interest. Yes, and I feel like. You know, with social media especially, it's hard to escape the limelight and it's hard to escape the camera. But it feels like him and his brother have actually, in some ways, they have had privacy. Yes. And they seem, they just seem very down to earth and you could just be friends with them. I know. I couldn't, you're just watching. Can you invite <laughs> us over just to hang? I mean, I. I what would you say to them? Like, a lot. yes, yeah. I'm there. <laughs> I, yeah, like when you're, if, you, oh. if they invited you for uh, tea. What'd you ask them? Oh my gosh, it's such a good question. I think I would probably, well, I'd want to know about their wedding plans. Um, Everyone's speculating. They're saying this spring, but is it going to be March, April, or May? They said May now. It is May. Okay. Joel says it's May. Good. It's going to be nice, beautiful weather. They'll be outside. When are you guys going to have kids? I mean, that's what I get. Well, they, they already <laughs> said, they said that they want to start a family soon. Oh, really? That's why they're doing it. I think they're doing quick, uh, okay. quick engagement. I love that. I mean, I think I would, I would be very interested in their courtship because they had this sort of, it feels like a whirlwind romance and it was so out of the limelight. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly pictures leaked here and there, but I'm curious how they met, how did they first know? There's a video like, out. You have to watch what? it. It's a 20 minute video. It just came out the other day. It's a sit down interview where they talk about their whole love story and how they met. Oh my God. Well, I'll so get you the link. They, we'll wait, put up the link. How did they meet? They met through a mutual friend and mutual friend connected them. Yes. Okay. And they didn't want to say her name because they wanted to keep her privacy. If so I would want them. the credit, they went, by on the way. A, they went on a blind date. Neither of them knew really anything about the other. So. If I was the person who set them up, again, like put my name. Out I know. There. You're like, hey, I it's feel me. like that's the <laughs> coolest <laughs> thing ever. I know. <laughs> I want. I mean. So I we might know. not be having tea with the royals, but you can drink your hot chocolate or tea out of your. Tervis AR mug. So we're giving away one of these to a lucky viewer for sharing this episode. Essentially what you can do is download their app and this entire mug is going to come to life. Are we showing the screenshot of it right now? Okay. You guys check this out at home right now. This is so cool. Your kids will absolutely love this. If you are watching and you're using the app, the gingerbread starts to eat all of the gingerbread on here. <laughs> it's, it's the coolest thing It's ever. absolutely adorable. So let me read you a little bit about this company. They're an innovative drinkware company, long love for their fresh and expressive designs, and they continue to revolutionize the industry with the latest tech-enabled products that redefines everyday drinking experience. That's so, awesome. And you can um, purchase your own gingerbread custom uh, AR mug, it's $19.99. It's on tervis.com, T E R V I S.com. And Kim is going to put that up on the screen. And then you can download the Tervis AR app and literally watch the little gingerbread eat all of the. I think that's a great price, yeah. especially considering this could keep your kids entertained in the back of a car, for example, where you don't really have much going on. <laughs> but it's, I think this is such a great idea. I do too. So I'm impressed. I think I won't. Well, I can't wait to see what lucky viewer wins their, their own mug for the holidays. So don't forget to share this episode. We are going to be back next week with a very special guest. Pamela Murphy from the Select 7 will join us and tell us all about how she started her platform. We're so excited to have her. And Joel, thank you so much for co-hosting today. This was so much fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for the uh, honeymoon advice. Yes. And uh, follow my hashtag. And Stay uh, uh, up to date with all my safari travels. Yes, I can't wait. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll talk to you soon.